All right, on today's episode of Locked on Avalanche, yes, do not adjust your sets. I am wearing an old, now old, Arizona Coyotes jersey. Why? Well, we'll talk about that. New episode of Locked on Avalanche coming at you. Your Locked on Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. It's always appreciated. Make sure you're following us on our social media outlets, LOPN underscore Avalanche on Twitter, X, Locked On Avalanche, Instagram, and threads. Questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, Locked On Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live, and make sure you're subscribed to our subtext as well. Link for that's in the show notes below. And when you do, chat with Kyle and I one on one. We get your opinion, everything Avalanche related, which we share on this very podcast. Like we will do a little bit later because the Utah We Don't Knows um, have released their temporary uniforms for next year. Um, and you might be even asking, like, why do I even have a Coyotes jersey? Well, uh, Matthias Michelli is like, I, I kind of. In a roundabout, I have to root for him because even though it's spelled differently, it's kind of like the Italian way to say my last name. So uh, as soon as I you know, heard there was this guy in the league and his last name was Michelli, I thought it was going to be spelled that way. It's not, but I don't care. I still root for the guy. So uh, and with Utah coming out with new uniforms, I promise this is still locked on Avalanche. But because we're kind of like the uniform and jersey nerds, like we're going to talk about it. Oh, yeah. So we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, where we're going to start, a couple of news tidbits that came in from Avalanche World on uh, Thursday. And one was a signing. Uh, nothing that's like, you know, earth shattering or something like that. But does it speak to something bigger? They went out, crossed oceans, and dipped into uh, the, the country of Finland to sign, uh, and I, I think I'm pronouncing this right, according to Elite Prospects, Yuri Inala is who they went and got. I'm not going to sit here and act like I know much about him. Um, the the little bit that I looked up based on them signing him is, okay, he could be something, could be uh, some sort of uh, production, maybe in the AHL. Could he be called up? Maybe eventually. It's one of those, you know, you're not signing him to to uh, cure any ills for the Avalanche right now, but at the same time, it seems like he's doing well over there. So see what he can bring over here. Maybe you catch lightning in a bottle somewhere. Everybody, go ahead, get your shirts printed up. The Stanley Cup is coming back to Denver. Bring it up, Yuri and all. Uh, no, it's this is <laughs> this is a sign of things to come. Um, this is. Uh, Equate this to a little bit of a lesser Abe Kubel move. There's no NHL experience here. There's nothing that's going to wow you. This is just a piece of the puzzle. And this is probably going to end up in Loveland. And right. you're, yeah. you're going to see this, like, scroll across the ticker for the Eagles scores. And you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that one Locked On Avalanche episode when they were talking about Utah. And they brought <laughs> up his name. And that <laughs> might be where... And all lives and stays, but it's it's just kind of where the market is and what the ads can do with the money. They need to put something together. Yes, okay. You got to fill roster spots, you know, where you can. Um, and I think for you know for for the abs and, and and going to sign him, it's just it's just that because <clears throat> if he was anything special, like he would have been here already. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but that's not to say like, you know, guys, he's 26 years old, I think he's been playing over there for a little bit. So in that aspect, he's got uh, some, you know, a, a lot of years under his belt in terms of playing the game at a pretty good level. So who knows? I mean, <clears throat> you bring him over here and, you know, is, is he going to turn into a, a, a top six guy? That's, that's doubtful. But you, like I said, you, you have to fill roster spots somewhere. They went and got this guy. They think he could obviously give something to the franchise at some level. So, okay. And you, you get him for a year. It's only, that's the other thing about it. It's only a year contract. 
So I don't really know what that is all about. I mean, why would you bring a guy over here just for a single year? We're, and, we're kind of like a show me kind of contract. I don't know. We're increasing the avalanche presence at the four nations game. There you go. And when you think Finland, you know, obviously we, we talked about, we talked about that yesterday, the four nations thing. And, and, uh, the, the the two fins on uh, the abs likely are going to be playing in that with Miko and uh, Arturi Lekkinen. So obviously they're going to take this guy under their wing and and do what they can with him. But I, it, it, you don't sit here and be like, oh, like you, say, you know, jokingly was like, we got the Stanley Cup coming back. No, it's not. It's not that. And, and I, I, I was seeing some comments online of people kind of mad about this and they will like they have to make these like you you have to 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 get roster players you have to sign some guys um i'm sorry it's not the big home run but you, what do you want like everything cannot be that yeah so you go out and you you liked him you like you like something about him he can score at a pretty decent rate not you know this amazing uh stats that he has but good enough to warrant a professional hockey team wanting to bring him in and see what they can do. So, okay, let's see what you got. Yeah, I would be mad if this was an ugly contract for a long time for somebody that's never going to see the NHL. Like, they were smart with what they had to do. They took care mm -hmm. of the problem. I, I think it's reassuring. Like, they kind of went international and expanded their reach a little bit and not just devote themselves to the NHL pool. Hey, this is it's it's a good thing, and this is an indicator that even though we're all talking about the Stanley Cup going on right now, the offseason is alive and well for the Colorado Avalanche. And in that same kind of realm, just you know, in, in research and scouting, um, Wade Klippenstein is it Steen or Stein? I, I, I yes, Stein. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who's been their director of scouting for the past few years. He just stepped into that role a couple of years. I think 2021, mm -hmm. he stepped into that role. Um, he has left. I don't know if he left or the ads just didn't renew his contract. That's what it was. Uh, yeah. And, and so he is now no longer with the club and um, odd timing guys like drafts right around the corner. Like, could this not have waited like another three weeks? Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's a little bit of, is it concerning? I don't know. But because you're so close to the draft, you have a lot of stuff, you know, already kind of like fleshed out in terms of like your board, which can, can still change. Don't get me wrong. But really odd timing here for this to happen. Well, it, it, it's kind of odd timing when you look at it through avalanche lenses, but he also landed the job. He's the, uh, the director of hockey development at Notre Dame. So it's not like he. Yeah, but is it, it wasn't like regular Notre Dame, was it? No, this is it's Notre Dame Hounds hockey. It's 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 not the University of Notre Dame. Right. But he found a spot which tells me that when this contract was not renewed, this was under the understanding of everyone. And this is not something that was just a shocking move out of nowhere that he had somewhere to go. And the avalanche knew they were going in a different direction two weeks before the draft. That's interesting, but okay. we've also worked through the Patrick Waugh walking away. So well, yeah, but look how that went the first year too. Uh, <laughs> don't, might be... don't bring facts into this, Chris. <laughs> um, I don't know, like it's it, it's it's just questionable to me, and I'm sure you know he's got guys that it's not just him. He's not the only guy that's on this <clears throat> committee or whatever you want to call it, like for for their uh, you know draft prospects and scouting and all that stuff. Um, but he's in charge of it. So where they go from here, I, I'm I again I don't know who's next in line. If they look outside the uh, franchise, if they look inside, whatever they do, when is is this going to be addressed after? the fact maybe but i just think the timing of this is just ooh, does, does this throw everything you have your director of scouting leaving uh you have cap friendly leaving although they still can use that for you know the timing which is good and listening to elliot friedman i don't know if anybody listened to that on, on 32 thoughts when he was talking about this a little bit more he 
he kind of he did basically said there are franchises out there in a little bit of a panic mode that cat friendly is going dark because they relied on that a little bit maybe a little bit more heavily than they should have and he listed off uh maybe six or seven teams that already have something in-house where they'll be just fine with it going dark. The Avalanche were not one of those teams. And he fully said, he goes, I I'm sure I'm missing some here. So uh, if he is whatever, you know, add your name to the list, basically. <clears throat> I'm pretty confident the Avs have something that, you know, even though Cat Friendly is going away, they're not scrambling. This, I don't know, man. It's just in the back of my head that it's like, this is just really odd timing for me. And you have a draft that's right around the corner. And the guy who's most up to date with all the info, sure, he's going to give you all of that. And you're in on a lot of it. But, you know, when it comes draft day, if things don't fall the way you want them to fall, who do you turn to? You turn to that guy and you're like, oh, all right, where are we going here? What we wanted is just falling apart. Where should we go? Give us, you know, what, what your data tells you, what your notes tell you. They don't have that right now. So going to be interesting. Going to be an interesting draft day for the Avs. Yeah, I blame you because I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure Sackick McFarlane were sitting in the war room getting ready for the draft, and they saw you talking about these draft prospects. And McFarlane turns and says, oh, no. why can't you do this? And he's like, no, I, no. I just I can't. <laughs> and he's like, get out of the room. We're not even renewing your contract. Yeah. Get out of here. So it's my fault. If I'm not here tomorrow, uh, basically, I have a, a new job, which I'm insanely underqualified for, <laughs> is what you're telling me? Okay. Yeah, you get this job without cat friendly. Have yeah. <laughs> uh, I will last 24 hours in that position. Uh, all right. Let's move on over to maybe the easiest grade we've ever done uh, when we've done been doing season grades, and that is Nathan McKinnon. So we will get to his season grade right after this. All right, let's hear from Ultimate Hockey GM. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NHL GM and managing your own hockey franchise, do you think you could run the Colorado Avalanche better than Chris McFarland or even Joe Sackick? Well, your dream has come true, and this game is most definitely for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team play through the seasons, and lead it to glory. Hire the right coaches and staff, like a director of scouting maybe, trade players or draft picks, navigate through free agency and the draft, all in a challenging and realistic world. As an Avalanche fan, you know there is no off-season. GMs are constantly making moves at every point of the year to improve their team's chances, and that's why I think you are going to love this game. Ultimate Hockey GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want and when you want. And Locked On Network listeners get a 100% free boost on their franchise when they use the promo code Locked On NHL in the game store. So make sure to check it out. Download the game at hockeygm.app or look it up on any of the app stores. That's Ultimate Hockey GM. Start your dynasty today. All right, uh, Nathan McKinnon season grade. Basically, I, I didn't show you this, but I'm going to. If, if you're watching on uh, on YouTube, here's the grade that I put up for everybody. <laughs> I just Whoa. did a with a whole bunch of pluses across everything uh, because I didn't give people an option really when I did this. Normally, uh, I'll do obviously A, B, C, D, or and F. Um, with Nathan McKinnon, I, I wasn't going to go that route and let the either people who think they're being funny or fans of other teams taint this. So I basically put out four A's with different pluses next to them. It was basically, which plus do you want to take? A plus, A plus, 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 or like 20 pluses. Um, and so he gets 100% across the board on A's. This was just uh, a season for the ages for if you're Nathan McKinnon, if you're an Avalanche fan, if you're the Avalanche franchise. Uh, most points scored in franchise history with 140. Uh, very, very good chance at being the uh, the heart winner. I think it's, def you know, we've said for most of the season it would be between him and Kucherov. 
I still think that's the case. I think it's going to be a very close vote, but I just have a gut feeling uh, that he's going to come out on top of that by a slim margin. But I think it, I think it's going to be his. I, this is a season we're probably going to be talking about forever if, if you're in, in ab circles. And how funny is it that we were talking not too long ago, will Nathan McKinnon ever hit 100 points? Can he finally do it? Yeah. And now, and for all those that are screaming, Bree, uh, Gabe Landeskog back, he's hit 100 points ever since he's been gone. <laughs> oh, so, boy. Don't start that rumor. But it's <laughs> it's incredible to watch Nathan McKinnon. And when you watch Nathan McKinnon night in, night out for 82 games of a year, and you watch all the hype, and you watch him be on every poster and every commercial and with every sponsorship and drink, you kind of get numb to it. But Nathan McKinnon is incredible. He's putting up 140 points in this day and age, in this economy, <laughs> it's in, it's incredible. And he's we, we say it so many times after every game, it's effortless. It's like he's got two more gears that he could use if he wants to. And just his style of play, he Nathan McKinnon is... Uh, it, it's weird to say that he's a little underrated, but hmm. he should be one of those that you talk about more. And I feel like the whole league is just kind of numb to, oh, that's Nathan McKinnon doing Nathan McKinnon things. But you hear about you hear about McDavid all the time. You hear about all these other names. But Nathan McKinnon, what he does is borderline incredible yeah. and generational. And it's one of those that you want to appreciate in the moment and not look back and wish you appreciated it more. And the thing that I like about McKinnon is like, at least in 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 Av's world, Kale McCarr was taking the the mantle of like Mister Avalanche away from Nathan McKinnon a little bit. Um, he was the, the the new kid on the block. He was putting up incredible numbers, making insane moves. You know, Deacon Chicago Blackhawks left and right in overtime. Like he and not that Nathan McKinnon was like stopped doing that. But I think McCarr was like the fresh face and like, what is this guy doing on a defensive side of things? And yeah, not, not I don't want to say Nathan McKinnon got, you know, forgotten, but it was just Kale McCarr, Kale McCarr, Kale McCarr and, he, and McCarr is still that guy. But these last two years, especially this past year, Nathan McKinnon has just taken it back of just being like, no, nah, like I'm still the granddaddy of, of this team with Gabe Landeskog out, right? So... I think, and I'm, I don't already want to go to next year, but I'm looking to, I'm looking forward to seeing what follows up. Yeah. Because he played every game last year, 82 games he played. So like there, there's nothing left there. Like It's not like he missed five games and still put up 140 points and be like, man, imagine what else he could have got with those extra five games. Like this is his for for personal stats. This is his 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 barometer right here, and it's can you get beyond that? And and it there you know y- y- this is an eighty two game uh, stat line that he has put up. So if he can match that and best it, good lord! Like now, now we're talking about oh my god, he did even better than the season where everything was there for him. He had you know the 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 home point streak, Jason Gretzky. Uh, the consecutive uh, 19, the two or three, uh, no, it was, was it two uh, runs of 19 oh, point yeah. streak in a row. Like, like it, it's just all of these, these stats that he's got are just gaudy. And if he does it again uh, next year, it's like, now we're getting to what we talked about in yesterday's episode of, can we, Put him up there consistently with McDavid. Yeah, you can. If he keeps doing that, if he keeps getting in the 130 to touches 140 year after year for the next five years, um, he's in that realm. And he already is for me, but on, on a grand stage, on a national stage, they'll people take more notice of him. And to watch him secure, like he's got the Mac trick now, where he's got his yeah. own name on certain accomplishments. And we saw him give up a hat trick to LOC, you know, to allow him mm-hmm. to get one. And it's like selfless. And he's not when like you mentioned the streak. And there were so many times during the streak that we talked about it doesn't feel like a slog. You're not sitting there at the edge of your seat. Oh, is this the shift? Is this the shift? 
he takes care of it early yeah. and just <laughs> yeah. gets right to it. It's yep. not like when you're watching like a home run race where you're watching every pitch, you're like, is this it? Is this it? There's no anticipation. You don't feel like he's trying or it has to labor to get these accolades and these points. It feels effortless. And it's just, you really don't have to worry about him. When Nate's in the game, you have a good feeling about the outcome. We're lucky to have him. And I can't tell you how many uh, other other fans of other teams or even hosts of other shows in this network um, that will, if we do a crossover, or they'll just message me and just be like, dude, like he's, he's one of those athletes that when you are going up against him, he scares you. Yeah. He's that good. Like he, like I remember being a Broncos fan when, when Peyton Manning was on the Colts, he scared you and you knew you had to play a perfect game to beat him, um, which was just next to impossible because he was always going to play a perfect game. Nathan McKinnon's in that realm of when he's on the ice, you have to take notice. And it, it's it's good that we have that guy, two of those guys, Kel McCarr being the other one, that are on our team. Don't take it for granted. Doesn't happen all the time. He's a wizard. He's awesome. Um, all right. That's the easiest grade that we've ever handed out. So coming up next, however, uh, we will be discussing these new Utah hockey team jerseys uh, that are just going to be for next year. And they're getting just run through the mud on social media right now. Is that fair? Or are these okay? These not so bad. Let's talk about it next. All right, let's hear from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, funny that we did Nathan McKinnon's uh, grade today because what do we call that, Kyle? The Nathan McKinnon A++++ trilogy. <laughs> eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for, an eBay guaranteed fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home the win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, so being the Jersey nerds that we are, uh, we got word that the the Utah Hockey Club, which I really hope does not turn into the Utah Yetis, um, their, their uniform for next year has been revealed. And you know, I even have it up here. So if you're watching over on YouTube, let's bring that up for everybody. There it is. Um, is that dark one black? Or is it just a really, really dark blue? I think that is a black. This is like that dress thing where it's like... Oh, no. Is it gold or white? Or Because oh. when I first saw it, I thought it was just like a really dark navy, navy blue. And somebody else said, no, that's black. And I'm like, okay, well, now I can't. Re- Maybe it's just the black background that's like throwing me off in this this image. But I don't know. Maybe it is black because then you'd have, uh, no, you have, you have the powder bluish and then a white. I don't know. Either way, it's very basic. It's just Utah, like Ranger style, um, black or very, very dark blue, uh, white, white and like a powder blue stripe around the bottom. Same around the, uh, Halfway down the sleeves, numbers on the shoulders. There you go. And then there's a white version too. People don't seem to like these, and I don't know why. I think they're fine. They're not ugly. They're just they're, they're, this is literally a holdover jersey. I, I don't I don't I don't get the hate for it. Okay, and I'll I'm gonna paint a picture for the audio listeners. Mm-hmm. If you don't under if you haven't seen these jerseys yet, congratulations. And I'm going to ruin it for you. Okay. You remember not too long ago, we were talking about the best Jersey logos and the Milwaukee Admirals came up. Well, that's your color scheme. Milwaukee Admirals. Okay. Yeah. You've got, you've got that in this Utah look, but if you're wanting to know what this Jersey looks like, I'm going to take you back to a time in the 1990s when your street cred relied on what was in the East Bay catalog. (laughs) Oh, East Bay. So, wow. Remember when you used to want to get a rec league basketball jersey and you're like, yeah, this is cool for $29. I could get my 
my town across my jersey and that mm-hmm. will be fine that's what this is and on the heels of vegas on the heels of seattle you come at us with the utah great colors like yeah. the great i colors. like the yeah. hockey club nomenclature i think that's nice and crisp and fine but then we have this and i there's no attitude there's no personality there's no differentiation from but what do you want them to do though like there's nothing they don't have a logo they don't have a a a nickname they don't have anything but it's all they have this is also the negative and the counter punch to all of the why does utah get a hockey franchise and it's always they have nothing they have what is out there like you this is your chance to not only sell your team but why mm-hmm. utah gets hockey and why we should care that utah is getting hockey and this is what you roll out there this is i'm 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 just kind of i'm baffled why people hate this so much because right now in in sports like simplicity is like ruling and and just v- being basic look at what the denver broncos did that is as basic as it gets, and people love it. And I'm sitting here like, no, that's a little bit too basic for me. This is just your 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 run of the mill hockey jersey. I think how you said like the East Bay thing is kind of like funny because it's kind of what it is. It's just you, you can go on like these websites and just design your own. This is what someone would design for themselves. It's- is it bad? No. Is it good? Definitely not. But the disdain that it's getting, it's like people like I, I, it's just very, it's just there. Like, well, why, why do people hate it so much when there's so much out there that is that is just like this? Well, just this plain. There would be no hate if this was the a the ECHL, the AHL, the SPHL. Going back to my roots, like okay. you can understand that this is the nhl this is the cream of the crop to quote the wise prophet macho man randy savage this is the cream of the crop and Mm -hmm. you have all these incredible jerseys with incredible history and this team exists because the nhl said we're not going to play in a college arena anymore that's kind of making the league look bad yeah so we're going to roll out these jerseys that when you go furniture shopping and you're looking at a couch and they have a display of a television, a cardboard television with non-trademark teams. This is the jersey you see on the cardboard television of a hockey game. This is the most generic, just just Again, put them out, just right. a, a blue, just go straight blue. No stripes, no nothing. Just do that. That at least would be like a little different. This is as basic as you could possibly get. And for us to accept it as an NHL franchise... You are, you are really making an uphill battle for to acquire fans outside of Utah. Well, you only have to accept it for a year, and then once they get their, you know, their team, their nickname, I don't know if they're changing colors with whatever that they come up with. Um, you know, a year from now, we'll, we'll kind of look back. Am I going to get one of these? Am I going to get a, a Matthias Michelli Utah one? I might. It's gonna be a collector's item, man. This is not gonna be around for long. You got one year to get these bad boys, and then they are gone. I can't wait for everybody to get upset with the fanatics jerseys, and we find, we go back to Adidas in about ten years, and then we go reverse retro part three, and uh, we we get these reverse retro. Yes, and then everybody just looks at them and continues on with their life, and nobody purchases this atrocious jersey that has been I'm bestowed so, upon our eyeballs. I am. I am. So confused that that you love the new Denver Broncos ones and hate these. It has a at so least confused. has it's got fifty two eighty in the neck. I mean, I always need to be reminded of the altitude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I threw this out to our subtext people, and the the results are polarizing to say the least. Uh, Zach says, honestly, I like them. Uh, I hate that I like them, but I like them. <laughs> um, Abs fan forever kind of goes where you said kind of screams AHL, but whatever, not the Yeti. So I'm not complaining. And I actually put up on uh, Twitter that I just hope they don't replace the Utah, which is four letters with Yeti, which is four letters. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they won't do that. I'm sure they'll have, you know, whatever the logo is, we'll have, you know, front and center. 
but I just I mean I saw the four letters in Utah. I'm like, oh god, they're taking Yeti and they're just gonna swap it out. I hope not, but we'll see. Um Electrician Ziggy says, if they keep those colors when they get their actual logo, I'm all for it. Uh, anything is better than the solid red Christmas sweater jersey they wear in Arizona right here. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, he said his brother in, you know, his brother-in-law is a Yotes in Utah fan, and he even couldn't stand those things. Wow. Hmm. You don't hear that a lot. Usually the Arizona uh, fan base very much backs up the Kachinas. Interesting. I'm it's one of the better jerseys, and to go from the Kachino, yeah. that's all time classic, to this Disney Channel, like High School Musical 4. <laughs> I, I just I don't know. Uh, Joe said they're aggressively mediocre. I don't hate them, or I don't hate or like them. I feel the same way about those uniforms as I do about a Big Mac. That's very Utah of them. Um, Katie says, or is she here? Uh, I'm following them pretty closely since I love the Coyotes and I'm following the team to Utah. They said all along the one year uniforms will be black and white. There she said, yeah, she says black. Mm. Um, and just say Utah. So they're about what I expected. Uh, I like the lettering and the little pop of blue throughout. So she kind of was expecting this, and I didn't really keep up with that. I don't know if they. Apparently, according to her, that they said this is kind of what it was going to look like. So maybe it didn't come to a shock to people that follow Arizona slash Utah. But um, to Hold see on. it in the flash is like, let yeah. me call Utah. Hey, guys, the season doesn't start tomorrow. You could have mm -hmm. spent an extra week or two and made it at least a little bit more. Don't give your fans the most basic thing ever. Give them <laughs> at least a little something like we're acting like you have to put this out on the ice today the season yeah. doesn't start tomorrow give it some time well th that's where i'm gonna go now vargar actually brings that up he says it's a joke it's ri ridiculous that they couldn't come up with a logo and name in six months i'm kind of with you there vargar i like i feel like they rushed all of this stuff and they have some time not a lot of time but I think that some of it goes to the fact, like, I don't know what it takes for, like, research and development. And obviously, they're getting votes in. Uh, they went from 20 names, which was just stupid to do that many, down to, what are they, down to, like, six or eight or something like that. And then eventually, we're going to, like, you don't need to have a vote for that long because it's, are you really going to go with what the fans, like, the majority of the fans, are you really going to do that? Because I kind of feel like a lot of teams will just do that to get people involved and then come up with their own uh, what they want, you know, like like the Avalanche did. The Avalanche went uh, Rocky Mountain Extreme, which nobody wanted, and thanks to Adrian Dater, we now are the Colorado Avalanche. <clears throat> so, are they really? Is it is it just dragging this out for a name that you already have picked? I don't know. Well, well that that remains to be seen. But he's like, and I don't know how long, like, I know there's a lot that goes into it. A lot that goes into, uh, you know, there's a whole team that does that and designing and, you know, where to put uh, the, the, the lines and all like all of it. It's a big undertaking. Could they have done it in the amount of time that they got the team in April? I feel like they could have. So to rush everything out is uh, a little bit weird. I'm, I'm kind of with Vargar there. Yeah, Chris, you could have told me at the beginning of the episode, hi, welcome to Locked on Avalanche. Kyle, by the way, can you think up a name and a jersey for the, the Utah team? And we go through the episode, and at this time, I would tell you everything. I would give you a jersey concept. I would say, hey, blend it with the Utah Jazz. Like Pittsburgh, everything is black and yellow. Create some kind of world in Utah where everything blends off each other. Play off the Jazz. Have an alternate name with your hockey team. At least something other than, hey, accept a black and white jersey with Utah on the name. We're going to be Utah Hockey Club. We can't figure it out. Maybe next year. No, come on. Yeah, We're man. Like, if, if you just get, like, you know, all the heads in a room and, and just lock yourself in there and just be like, hey, let's, you know, bands have come up with albums in three weeks. Yep. Um, You know, it, it is a little bit odd. It's a little bit odd to me, so. Um, and I, this is the last one. I, I'm reading most of this, the subtech ones today because they're kind of funny. And Easton says, based on our, let's talk about you and I, our love for uh, logos that are just letters, I'd say you're a fan. 
and he's right about it. well he's half right i'm okay with them you dislike them he said they look like baseball uniforms four out of ten i give me the logo all day that center logo that they got on that graphic right there the utah hockey club mm-hmm. beautiful wonderful yeah and then th- this jer- is doo-doo garbage <laughs> we are split i think i'm gonna get one just be just because it's uh you know it's only well, are you out of toilet everything. paper over there, Maselli. <laughs> we'll see. And uh, I, I, I will. I can't wear it for opening day because opening day is probably gonna be the same day as uh, Abs Nation. But yeah. I got to get a Michelli one of it. I have to. You yeah. don't agree? No. All right. All right. <laughs> that is going to wrap it up for today, everybody, and for this week. So thank you for tuning in and making this your first listen of the day every day. Always appreciated. For Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan, I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche podcast. Enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you guys next week.